Okay, folks, good morning. I had a pretty successful day yesterday. I did a lot of painting. Didn't get that many guys painted, but if I remember correctly, the old total used to be it takes me about four hours to paint a guy. So if that's the case, then I am doing a lot better than I used to do. But um, we got three guys complete, except for the basing, and a fourth guy nearly complete. Monsieur Jack here. He's got not much to do. We have a beret, some shoes, some detailing on his Bren gun. And that's pretty much it. Well, he's good to go. So we'll get started again on the resistance fighters. This will be the fourth guy. So really had a good time painting these guys. I'm really, really glad that I made the decision to do this. This guy is actually complete and sealed. This is the first one, Pierre, and um, it's really handy to just be able to just take the uh, the lacquer and paint over them, and boom, they're done. So these other two have not been sealed. So we'll do that once um, we get a few more. Okay, so let's um, let's continue. I was gonna say let's begin, but no, let's continue. trying to wake up here a little bit. I had another troubled night. I went to sleep early and then I woke up multiple times in the middle of the night waiting for the daughter to show up. She didn't do anything wrong. It was just she was out. And then I woke up like at three and I'm like, no, three? I was almost like four. And I'm like, ah, oh, just have to get up in an hour. And then I overslept. Like, really? <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, looks like we got some red left in there. Let's, let's take care of that right now. Yeah. This brush behaved really well yesterday. Uh, you already have this little free French thing on that guy. Um, all these guys have it, have it as well. Good. We're. I like the I like the little cross of Lorraine there on the little white section of the tricolor armband. Okay. Uh, Le Grenade. <laughs> I actually thought there would be more manufacturers that would make these guys in 20 millimeter. There aren't that many. There aren't any on Plastic Soldier Review that have them in, in plastic. Well, there's one company and they look weird. They almost, they're, they're weird the way they're cast. They almost look like they're run over by trucks or something. A weird company called MIR or something like that. And they cast all their figures almost like flat. And they look that's what they look like. They look like they're laying prone from tank attack it's weird but I figured there'd be a lot more I mean it's not that strange of a subject all right 
Got that out of the way. We said this guy was going to have a... Um... Well, I did say he was going to have a, a, a black beret, but man, the dark blue one looks so much better. Just adds another little color. I think I'm going to make this guy dark blue beret. And then shoes and he's done. And we'll go on to the next. Next fellow. Ian Wright. Welcome. Good morning. Where's this dark blue hanging out? Oh, out here? Yeah. Oh, and his hair. Twenty mm doesn't seem to be very popular for World War II nowadays. Most people prefer twenty-eight or fifteen. Yep. Well, that's one of the reasons why I scored so many things because people don't like the stuff that I'm interested in. Um, fifteen millimeter wasn't a thing really for World War II twenty-five years ago when I started collecting these. So. I. I like 20 millimeter a lot because like, hey, I want a car, go to the store and get one that's close, you know. 28s, never liked 28s, never did. If I would have started this now, well, the whole reason I got started was because I, I like the sculptor that did stuff in this scale. So, you know, I'm going to be providing everything for this game. So, and, um. You know, this might be a scale people don't like. It might be a set of rules people don't like. I like them. That's good enough for me. I'm going to run games in them. And if we're going to solo them, we solo them. You know? Yes, they'll be filmed. Don't worry. This will have a great freaking narrative. Yeah, 20 millimeter was pretty much a, a UK scale. And there's a couple of holdouts here in the United States that are big fans of this stuff. But they're few and far between. They're people that have been at it for a while. No newcomer is going to go, I want to go with 20 millimeter. It's those of us that have had this stuff for a long time. The only thing I don't like about this scale is I left World War II for about 20, 20 years. <laughs> Which I guess is a long time, but it didn't seem like it. I guess I stayed busy during those 20 years. And um, a lot of manufacturers I really, really liked went out of business. And some I don't like so much still are in business. Isn't that annoying? But I don't mind it so much because we have so access to so much information now on the internet that we didn't before to, to make these games better. for a few highlights and he's done.
well then the hat's done. All right, shoot time. Not a fan of 28 millimeter. I don't mind playing games with somebody else's 28 millimeter. I'm not painting any of my own. Too expensive, take up too much space. Some of them will look goofy. Some of them don't. I mean, 25 years ago when these first started coming out, kind of for historical, a lot of them look really goofy. Now there's some pretty decent ones. But it's just not my thing. Those of you guys that are a fan of that scale, you should be happy. Everybody's, almost everybody does your scale. You don't need me. <laughs> ben, back for more. I don't think it's live yet, but Plastic Soldier Company are having a sale just for, just for today. They're bumping prices up in May, so if you had your eyes on anything, it might be worth a gander. This shipping is brutal, man. I'll take a look at my homework assignment that I didn't do any of it of. Said today only, huh? PSC, I'll put this right below the stalker game. <laughs> PSC. Probably one of my favorite manufacturers. Maybe not for the infantry, but definitely for the tanks. They're not perfect, but man, there's some durable stuff. I also discovered PSC bought Scotia Grendel, and Grendel do 20 millimeter World War II stuff. Looks like it's mostly decals and terrain. Really? Scotia used to do, um, didn't they used to do like sailing ships or something like that? Scotia Grendel were the ones guys that bought Zeiston. So Zeiston's been traded, right? So Zeiston's been traded twice. I don't like Plastic Soldier Company buying stuff because they have such a hard time getting their product to people here in the States. It's just so difficult to get their stuff. It's like the last thing they need is more things to try to get out. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just thinking, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, you know? They're doing a big sale for a salute. I I write that down. I need to check out some. I bet I bet there's some stuff there that looks amazing. One day of salute. Imagine if you're a war gamer in Brittany, like looking forward to salute. That's the one day you gotta work. Like son of a bitch. They have a weird history selling off ranges. Huh. Well, there's some, there's, there's ranges. There's certain miniature, miniature ranges that are miniature manufacturers that I recognize by name, but I don't think I've ever seen very much of them. And Scotia reminds me of one of those. Um, the other one I'm thinking of is... They were, they were what I would call ahead of before my time. I may have been wargaming during the period that they were available, but it was a they either did periods or, or stuff that I wasn't into. Um, what's the one I'm thinking of? Jacobite. Jacobite is before my time. And I'm, I've noticed that people have mentioned them like, I've never seen Jacobite stuff. Um, and there's another couple of them as well.
such as the trials and tribulations of a cottage industry. A lot of these companies don't have a whole lot of employees. And I'm sure one of the things that befell a lot of them is the owner is some dude that was the sculptor and did it all and his either didn't have children or his children said, I'm not dealing with all them weirdo gamers. Somebody else can keep that. Which I don't blame them. If you don't if you're not into this, you shouldn't be doing this, you know? All right, I'm getting second thoughts about something. I'm gonna do a quick internet search. And I don't think of a Sten gun as having a, a um, what do you call it? Um, I'm just, I can't think of it right now. The part that goes up against your shoulder, made of wood. And all these have it. And now that I think about it, I'm losing, I'm losing my freaking vocabulary. Oh, I guess it is made of wood if it comes with stock is what I'm thinking of. Okay. It looks like if it has those things, those things are wooden. Okay. Fair enough. We will go back and paint those things. There was a company that was big when I was first getting into miniatures called... I guess I shouldn't bring things up that I can't think of right off, that I haven't already thought of in advance. This is what happens when you live drug-free. You can't think of things, huh? Uh, they do American Civil War stuff. I can't think of who they are. But actually, they had a certain style, and I actually liked their style, and in 15 millimeter. And the store that I played at had a bunch of their stuff. And I think they're still available. You know, some things look really good a long time ago, and then later on you're like, ah, I don't know how I even like those things. The Jacobite confused with someone else, but I thought Warrior bought the Jacobite Rangers, or was it Tin Soldier Company? It's probably Warrior. As I've scoured the Tin Soldier Company site a lot. I actually like these Tin Soldier figures. They're weird. Some of the guys look like the cartoon character Ziggy. I don't care. I like them. Jacobite was bought by Elite War Games and models who still have a website but no longer appear to be trading. You know, the other figures that, that have been sold a million times are the ones that I got started with in the scale. The ones sculpted by um, Dave Alsop. I knew them as combat miniatures in the U.S. Some of you guys call them MLR. Um... They're now traded by Stonewall Miniatures, who have at, who still call them, I think, combat miniatures, but have added a whole lot of other lines by a different sculptor that isn't remotely look, looks the close the same. Warrior bought the old Gallia range. Gallia range is another one that's before my time. Yeah, I don't understand how people don't take pictures of their miniatures unless they're trying to be nefarious. Like, well, these figures really suck. Let's see if we can talk people into buying them and they'll be sorry. And nope, no refunds. I, I don't know. I just, it seems like, you know, running a business is a lot harder than posting things on the internet. You know? I don't know. Do a Facebook page and put all your pictures on Facebook. Even an idiot like me can do that. <laughs> <coughs> And I'm not, um, I'm not tech, 
Oh shit! Is the, I bet the picture's side backwards, isn't it? Ha! I t I caught it before you did. No. Okay. This time I did nothing different, and the picture didn't change. What, Ben? I don't understand. I did nothing different. I just plugged it in, realized, oh shit, I didn't shift it, and then it didn't need to be shifted. I'm telling you, just technology. I was about to say, I'm not technology uh, uh, deficient. Uh, I'm not technology handicapped. The, the problem is, is they keep changing the freaking technology, and I don't, I don't keep up with technology as, as my as my job. I had a new computer delivered to me at work. And the guy's like, you need any help putting it together? I'm like, no, I got it. And I did. I was able to put everything together. I mean, I kind of know, you know, I'm not a genius. And then I have two screens and they were reversed. I figured out how to re-reverse them for relatively easy. Like I knew Windows 98 really well. And then they went and made another Windows and hide stuff. And like the thing that was there isn't there anymore. Now I got to go hunt for it. You know? So I'm not technology handicapped. The problem is, is they, they always have to screw with things. And I'm fine with them changing it, but man, they change it every freaking year. I had a bad experience with Elite two years ago. Ordered 40 pounds worth of Jacobite miniatures to do a Milanese condata. No reply to numerous emails. Given up as a lost cause. And they kept your money? Wow. Sounds like they pulled a... I'm not going to mention their name here. Yeah, luckily it was only 40 pounds worth. I don't get it. Some places just give you really good service. And some places could just tell you to go fly a kite. Actually, in that situation, Jeffrey, they didn't even tell you that. You don't know if they're alive. You know, they could have all died from a massive heart attack. Okay, we need a wooden color. That we're going to mix. That's going to end up being too orange. Boy, I really can't see anything out there. Yeah. Well, I already have some of that color. I'll use. I'll go with that. Luckily, it was only forty pounds worth. Literally just saw someone complaining about the company that must not be named, and it was for the problem you had. Ooh, which one? Because I've had two problems. The sent me the um, sent me the material that was damaged, or the it's got to be that one because I don't think you know really well the one that never responded to my orders. I did eventually get my money back, but we had to contact the credit card company. And then I, one of you guys suggested, uh, it was Marcus, says, hey, I found that somebody has those KV models, so I ordered from him. And that guy didn't have it in stock, but he was super nice, and I had a couple intercommunications with him on email, and everything was cool. You know, if your inventory says that you show something and you don't have it, you know, first of all, fucking apologize. Hey, our inventory's wrong. Okay, I get it. Just, and he's like, do you want to use it? You want to buy something else? I'll give you, I think he said like a 20% off. If you want something else. And I'm like, I'm thinking, should I walk away from 20%? I'm like, yeah, it's only 20%. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. I said, thank you. But I'll remember that. And that's probably one of the companies that I will choose to do business with. If given a chance because of the positive interaction. Sam 
same experience with elite managers and models. Did get a refund from PayPal. Other people have reported similar problems on their Facebook page. Yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame because, you know, miniature companies, the general public isn't going to buy from them. I mean, we're not the general public. I mean, we're a pretty elite group of people. And I mean that in every way of the definition. There's just not enough of us to piss off. You know, you make things that, you know, are, are rather strange that you're not going to be able to sell with the local market. You don't need to piss off your customer base. But some people, I guess, don't care, you know, or they use it as a second business. Or maybe, you know, they're filling in for another family member who's original was the original person of the miniature line and like, well, maybe I can run this thing in the ground so I don't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> it was for a wrong map plus the telegraph line seemingly got blown down in a slight breeze. I don't understand the telegraph line part, but yeah, I don't know what's going on at that place, but the only reason I traded with them is this other gentleman that I know, I don't know them physically. Uh, I have communicated with them a lot on, uh, on another site for many, many years. And I have played some field of glory with them and he was raving how good their mats are. And I'm like, let's give them a shot. They were running free shipping. Um, when you stop communicating, I just assume something happened to your health. Um, one of the, my favorite people that I traded with was this guy named John Roberts. And I hope he's okay. And um, I don't know how old he was. I feel like he was an older gentleman that had... <coughs> health issues. Um, I don't know what they were. I think they were, I don't know what they were. Um, and the reason I was trading with him is he ended up taking over Roundway and Naismith. And a lot of people had trouble getting a hold of him. But he legitimately had health issues. I hope he's okay, but that and that was pre-pandemic. So, but I bought I bought from him three or four, on three or four different occasions. But which is a shame because I really like Roundway figures a lot. So stop communicating is weird, especially in this day and age where we're always communicating with each other. You know, the guy stopped communicating. Well, he crashed in, you know, in the Amazon and there's no signal there. Love Gold Warrior Rangers are basic and cheap, but they were great for building armies when younger. I'd never heard of them. But then, you know, they, they might have been popular, you know, before... I was really doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, I was doing World War II, but I wasn't doing 15s, ancients, and medievals or whatever. It's a little bit of a... of a bright spot there. Okay, we got that one up to par. I guess these pair, these guys pair dropped all these Sten guns that have... Um, that have the stocks on them. These paratroopers are like, British paratroopers would be like, what do you think of the new stand guns? These stocks are annoying. I'm sending to France. To get rid of these things. Let the French deal with them.
Was a Sten? Is a Sten was a decent gun, right? I mean, you could see it was weird in that you could see the the um, the spring, but I don't remember them being unreliable. Right? They're kind of cool looking. I mean, they're they're kind of ugly and a well, not that ugly, honestly. There's a video out there on YouTube, or it's or a reel. Only time I watch reels is if they come in through YouTube or whatever or Facebook. I don't go to the TikTok, Patty Whack, whatever thing, Chinese and whatever. I don't. It's just just too much garbage on there, anyways. Um, regardless of whether or not they're spying on you or not, I don't care. Um, but um, and this guy has this video, and I think it's titled something like. How this machine gun saved, you know, made the the one World War Two, and it was the uh, the Lancaster machine gun, I believe. And uh, the comments in that section are hilarious. You know, the video is really not worth watching. It was just if you know that. Oh, this turned out well. Good. I love painting things of wood. Looks nice. Okay, and this chap. Still hope Outpost comes back. It's not been an update in a year. Yeah, I kind of liked them. They were quirky looking, but I liked them. Speaking of coming back, I never did want, I never did buy any Legio Heroica. And those figures and whoever painted them on their website deserves an award named for them. It's just some beautiful stuff right there. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Not doing Ancients and Medievals has one advantage. I don't have to hear about the frickin' Mongols. I can't believe there's that many Mongol admirers out there. I'm, I am not a fan of those bastards. Buy an order from both Warrior and Outpost when they both suspended trading. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a vendor here in the United States called... No, I'm not going to tell you who it is. Can't think of what their name is. It, they, they're out of business now. And they carried a bunch of weird ranges, odd ranges like Outpost. That's who I got mine from. Um, they're in the middle of the U.S. And they had an odd name. And they stopped trading about five or six years ago, so I've forgotten who they are. Okay, Jack. Jack will be black haired. Black haired Jack. Black Jack Shellac. You guys get Bugs Bunny out there in Europe? I used to watch those with my dad. Those are the funny ones. Not fucking Disney cartoons. Man, Looney Tunes. That's where it's at. That's some funny stuff. Not all of them. Many of them.
Anybody see that Narvik film that I saw last week? I'm, I thought I thought several of you had watched it. Uh-oh, this guy's got one of them. Straps that go on the, on the stand, so we're not done. That's, I believe, the color that we're gonna use. Let's see if it's still alive from yesterday. It's alive enough. It was, maybe it was Australian Greg that watched that show. That movie that told me about it. That's probably who it was, now that I think about it. Shock is done. Okay, Ben, while you're on the on the line here, I need to look at something that you asked me about the other day, and that was uh, the 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 particular game you wanted me to take pictures of or take a look at at our show. Let me see if I can find it to make sure that I don't miss it. Let's see. Uh, HMGS South Recon. That should take me where I need to go. All. Uh, tabletop events, correct. And uh, let's go to attend events schedule. Let's see what it's called. This is a lot better because it defaults to now to doing it by time, which was not always the case. I hope it's on Fridays. I don't have anything to do Friday. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be sitting around, but.
Okay, here's a blood and steel, second Seminole War. That's not in. Talk about a war I'm not interested in. That would be one of them. See what the hell this is. Good morning, Ben. I'm sorry, Marcus. I'm trying to do two things at once, and I suck at that. Ben, do you remember what this, what the game is called that you were, you wanted me to take a look at it? Catch it on film. Why does everybody run everything on Saturday? I don't want a Windows update. Leave me alone. I'm busy. Yeah, they have tons of stuff on Saturday. Yeah, it's HMGS South Show. Yeah. Let's see if I could. You said it was Blood and Steel, so let me do a search by Blood. The only Blood and Steel I see is uh, Second Seminole War. Yeah, I just don't want to go there and go like, oh, it's, I didn't see it, and it was right there. Yeah, see if you can find it. I know that they're running some, they're running some Russians and, I think you said it was Russian and English, they're running some Russian and English stuff, but with the sword and the flame. That guy actually puts on pretty good games. Jeff Baumol puts on good games. And of course, at the same time that I'm playing Lion Rampant, I'm going to play a line rampant because I know I'm going to enjoy those rules. And I'm, I enjoy that GM stuff. But Okay, so we have Pierre, Claude, Marc, and Jacques. Okay. I need to find out who the biggest figure is. Here he is. And because this guy is the biggest figure, he's going to be Andre the Giant. So this is Andre right here. That's what we're going to do next. Looks like he has... It looks like he has a regulation... Um, French jacket or something like that. This guy should be easy to paint. Andre the Giant. No, I'm not a wrestling fan. 
But even I know who Andre the Giant is. I know he's not the scale. His head would have been, you know, bigger than a figure. That guy had a big head. That guy had the head of, like, livestock. <laughs> Andre. There's an accent on the E at the end, isn't there? I got to be careful. and Because they have accents, and then they have accents that go every which way. They have the, you know, they have the standard Spanish accents, which are to the right. But the French have the ones that go the other way, too. I'm like... I can kind of write in Spanish, but I don't use accents. I just put the words, I put the letters down. And, oh, he's got a pistol. Nice. Is it a French pistol or is it one of those sexy uh, high powers? With a 13 round magazine. It's a lot of firepower. When the German pistols only hold eight. All right, we missed a couple black spots in here. Let's go ahead and get those. All right, Andre the Giant. You know, I'm not gonna go in and try to figure out if this guy's smock is actually a British pair of, yes, I am gonna do that. Okay, we're gonna set Andre to the side because we've got pockets, we've got, the straps that go across, they're almost like tightening straps. This might actually be a Denison, a Denison uh, gear. So let's, we want to paint him correctly. The, the sculptor went through all that trouble to put on it. We're going to put Andre to the side. Okay, but that's who Andre is going to be. Let's see who else we got in here. This guy's got a tie and everything. He's like a freaking Boy Scout. He's got a badge on his beret. I, I don't know. This guy's got just shirt sleeves and he's got a rifle. Ooh, a guy with a rifle. Okay, this guy's Philippe. All right, let's paint up Philippe here. Um, he's going to have a light colored shirt. Somebody with the dark bluish pants. Yeah, we'll give him dark bluish pants. Light colored shirt. He's got a bandolier wrist watch. Right. He missed that push a good deal. They had bad luck with health issues over the years. War was a shock. They've been like ECW figures. Yeah. Well, at least those people have a reason to stop trading. Not like, you know, certain manufacturers just like, oh, we're not going to support those. We're going to going to support those figure lines or games that we came up with ourselves. So you're up a creek. You know, nobody wants to be unhealthy, you know. Well, most people don't want to be unhealthy. All right, Philippe. We're going to start with a buff colored shirt for you.
sure we've got some dark brown we can probably bring alive. Yep. And here's the buff. I bet that's a I bet that's a British dropped. I hope well, I hope it is. I, I really don't want to make his his jacket and his pants the same color. But he's got those puttees on, so I don't think somebody would volunteer to wear those puttees. Um if they didn't have to. Just seems like incredibly impractical. That's part of the bandolier. Oh, Fu, I listened to an older podcast on the Russians versus Persians was at the skirmish convention. It was a different one, huh? What was it that you were interested? Ru oh, Russians and Persians? Yeah. Well, this convention does have a problem, and the problem that it has is that the games get posted as people submit them, and, and that's a good thing, because if you submit a game, you can see it basically immediately posted there. The problem is, is that People can already sign up for a game as soon as they see it. So if you wait too long to sign up for a game to make a decision, you don't get to play in it. However, something cooler can be released afterwards. And then you're not signed up to play that thing. So it's kind of a it's kind of a mixed blessing. His castle's costing too much to maintain, yeah. Yeah, a lot of these cottage industries, you know, they probably have, you know, they either don't have somebody to carry on or they don't, or their family members just don't want to deal with it. Like, I don't know anything about these miniatures, Dad. I, I can't continue doing it. All right, I'll sell it to so-and-so, you know. A little bit of paint in there on the towards the edges that's keeping the this from coming to a good point Let's see if we can get rid of that Persian, my interest. Persians had a fairly European army. We weren't masses of spear armed natives getting gunned down. Yeah, what does interest me is there's a guy that's running a sword in the flame, Afghanistan, with the with the with the English and the Russians at it. So I might I, I gotta go over there and take some pictures of those Russians. But I thought I was gonna get into that, but I can't be into everything. I can basically do one thing. Because it's going to take me so long to do it that if I do more than one thing, I'm not going to get enough of any of those things done to be worth it to do more than one thing. So we're doing one thing. It's going to be WW2. End of story. This is where I belong anyways. Until I get tired of it and go back to something else.
but I never want to do anything. And what I mean do is I build stuff for it to play the game. I'll play other people's games. I don't, I don't care. That, but I'm not doing anything that's too basic. Because I'm not putting all this effort into painting these figures. And then they just be like, okay, one to six, they die. Five to six. No, no that's, just, that's too lame. I'm not putting this kind of effort into painting them for that kind of nonsense. Scotia makes nice terrain. Egyptian Aztec ruins. Oh. I actually like the color that I, that I got here. So, you know, I mix these two, I got a different color, and I'm probably just gonna lighten this one up with white. I love painting drab type colors because you, they, you could do so much with it. If you just blend them in a different way and start lighting them, light and light, lightening them up from different points. Now, one thing is for sure, we're done with this brush for the next stage. We need to do this right here. So let's, I need to mix enough of this that when we add stuff to it, there's enough of it left. So let's make sure that this is about where we were. It is, okay, cool. Now let's get a fresh little drop of white. tired of picking up the varnish when I want white. Let's get the hell out of there. I haven't had, I was, I was mentioning yesterday, I said, I haven't had that many dealings with people that have been negative. The guy that wouldn't answer the model kits from the KV2, that was a bad, that was a bad deal. Um, the issue I had with the mats, or I'm having with the mats. Um, the new owners of minifigs, several years ago they made it right but it was a freaking mess uh, again it's a communication issue um, who else that may be everything I haven't really had bad bad experiences with it So the guy with the mats is supposed to send me a replacement for one of them that he said way back when he was going to send me another one. And 
excuse this, excuse that, excuse the other thing. He supposedly put it in the mail a month ago. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm just going to I'm just going to write it off. Justin Sobaka. Welcome back. He must be he's got to be an older guy. Only because us younger guys, we check our freaking, we check our stuff all the time. I don't check email, but I don't really use personal email. So I build model cars. No, I buy them in the store. <laughs> I, I, I've got to find a way to how to tear this thing apart better, because doing it how I've been doing it is just, it's detrimental to my health. I'm going to end up losing the finger or getting injured. So, um, and it has an interior that can be painted. So, um, yeah, I want to see somebody get run over. You know, you hop in this thing and go down a road and run somebody over. That's the kind of stuff you want to see in a game. Grand Theft Maquis. <laughs> contrast here. Jeez, it goes to an extreme. Hot Wheels. Yeah, this one is actually a Johnny Lightning. No, this one is a Hot Wheels with rubber tires. This one's a Johnny Lightning. And who makes this one? RVMM Inc. 1999. I'm not sure. So, but I like to strip them. Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to take the paint off. I think we're just going to, um, just so we can repaint them well. Community makes used to sculpt and paint the resin stuff in the early days. Makes sense that he concentrates on casting. Leave the other ranges to others. Yeah, I actually have a lot of Hot Wheels. So I was getting stuff for um, Gaslands, but... My heart's not in that. It's a fun game. It's fun to play. I just don't, my heart's not in running it. You know, looking stuff up. That's one of the, um, that's one of the after effects of playing DBA. I, I'm burned out on looking up rules. I'm burned up on looking up rules and then coming up empty handed like, I don't know what they mean. So any rule, that any game that's written kind of like that, I'm like, I, I don't mind playing it, but I'm not going to look it up. Hey, GM, what do we do here? You know, and move on. I'm there for the narrative and the die rolling. This guy's getting dark blue pants. Right. 
Dark blue pants it is. It's going to behave better than this one. This one's already, it's outlived its welcome. It could be big. We're just putting the main color down. Um, I don't want to use the same color as the beret. So let's use dark blue and we'll darken it. Just don't want to look as like blue jeans. Although what, blue jeans were invented during the Old West time, right? I think. What do I like more, solid resin models or plastic or metal? Well, for vehicles, I prefer plastic. I prefer plastic because it's it's easier to uh, using the weld cement. Um, for figures, definitely metal. Resin's hit or miss. The problem with the resin is sometimes resin's really expensive, and you don't really gain any advantage. Um, plastic only stinks for things if it has if it's flexy if it flexes a lot and then I'm worried about things flaking off now I've painted those Russian tank crew and I think that they're going to be pretty durable but um, I definitely like the plastic for the vehicles I used to like the white metal for the vehicles the most 20 years ago um, because it gave them some heft but the problem is is a vehicle being light is actually helpful because if somehow it falls on the ground, it doesn't crush itself with its own weight. Um, and it's easier to drill out like antennas and stuff like that. Um, when you drill through white metal, it is just, it's this balance of precision and like brute force. You gotta use a lot of brute force to get through sometimes the material. And it's just a lot easier just drilling into plastic. So I prefer plastic for the vehicles. Um, And there's a lot of variety in this scale for plastic and not so much for white metal anymore. There's a couple companies that make them, but you know, a resin's kind of weird because, you know, resin used to be better than white, that used, used to be pretty good because you could get a lot of detail on the resin. But when it comes to resin, you have to use the same glues that you would have to for white metal. So you don't gain anything there. So. If I'm gluing stuff with white metal, I gotta use epoxy. I gotta use epoxy if I'm using um, resin. If I'm using resin and white metal uh, together, I still have to use epoxy, which it's fine, except that, you know, it's, it's, it's not my favorite. So I don't know if that answers your question, but um, I use them all. You know, I use them all, but if you're gonna let me choose, um, Plastic's easy to sand. Um, if you saw me working on those T3485s from, I'm sorry, the T34s from Skytrex, the old Hinchcliffe models, they have these panel lines. If you look at the side of the turret, um, and it's supposed to be, let's see if I can get this at the right angle. If this is the side of the turret, and it's supposed to be smooth like this, 
there'll be one that has an overhang on the top and then it's under on the inside. Like, what are you supposed to do with that? Sand it so much, then fill it. You know, I'm not going to spend, you know, hours fixing somebody's mold. And if it's plastic, it's a lot less likely for that to happen and a lot easier to fix. Um, so... That's, that's my preference. And that's my preference now. When I started back doing this a year ago or so, I probably would have told you I still preferred white metal. But I like the plastic better. I like the plastic better. It's more, it's easier to work with. Some of the plastic kits from older models can be a pain. Yeah, they can be brittle. Uh, example, many Airfix toolings are over 50 years old. Resin depends a lot on the quality of the resin and how it cures. Yeah, I got some resin stuff that's amazing, and I've got some resin stuff that is horrible. And um, the resin stuff that's horrible actually still paints up okay. You just, it's, well, here's a resin thing. I think this is horrible, but I think when I'm done with it, it will actually be okay. See if I can get this to the right angle. See that finish there? That's the finish of the model. And it's all over it. So we're gonna this is gonna be some mud covered thing, and that'll just be pretend to be like they they smeared this all over it to, to which you know sometimes they did. So I don't know how it's gonna turn out. But then look at the front look at the front tires. Front tires are actually really well detailed. But the rest of the body is like rough as shit. I don't know who the hell made this. I don't know if this is a BP cast or... I think it is. But... I don't know why on the flat surface it's that rough, but it is. But I was silly and I bought this however many years ago. Because it was at a show and they had one. I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy it. You know? Instead of like now that we have access to everything. And it's like... You go somewhere, it's like, well, they don't have exactly what I have. I'll just Amazon it or eBay it or whatever. When I get home, it'll be there in a couple days, you know. Instead of like, well, this is what I got because this is what they had. Which is why if you look at all the tanks I have, I have a one from this manufacturer, one from that one, one from this other one because that's how I would get stuff. I'd go to a store and they had something. I'm like, all right, I'll get it. It's not what I want, but... I'm not coming home empty handed. But that's what we did in the 90s. <laughs> and for the most part, I didn't do anything with them until like now. Now is when I'm using this stuff that I've had for umpteen years. So, for instance, if I did stuff like Warhammer 40K, I wouldn't mind the plastic vehicles, but I wouldn't like the plastic figures. And I think everything's plastic figures now. Why does everybody go to plastic figures instead of white metal? Well, I have my own reasons why. People say cost, but, you know, the cost gets passed on to the consumer, you know. It's kind of like, we're going to tax this business. Mm, businesses don't pay taxes. I mean, they do, but they get passed on to the consumer. So, now I may be one of those that it's going to get passed on to the consumer, so the price is going to rise so much, so nobody's going to buy our stuff because it's so expensive. Okay, there's that. But I think my personal reason is is because 
of many of these figures aren't available anymore because the molds are ruined and they haven't been refixed. There is a limited lifespan. There is a very limited lifespan on white metal models because the material you're pouring in, this is my unprofessional opinion. This is just me seeing what I'm seeing. The material that you're pouring in is so much more durable, dense than the mold material. So eventually the mold material is going to wear out, which gives you crappy castings. So it'll have to be redone. And um, plastic, you're pouring, injecting plastic into something that is a lot harder than the plastic. So it's going to be a lot more durable. You can get a lot more things out of it. That's, I think, the reasoning. And that's actually a pretty good reasoning, I think. Uh, because you don't want to spend all this time sculpting stuff and then, you know, oh, 10 years later, it's no good anymore. Well, that's not a very good value. You know, you want to run the molds a lot longer than that. So that's my unprofessional opinion. Looking at it from the outside. Because all these figures that I have here aren't available anymore. And the story that I got is the molds were ruined. I'm like, well, I just got them the other day. I didn't. I got them 20 fucking years ago. But apparently they're not they're only good for ten or twelve years or something like that, and then they're you know, they're trash. So that's a shame because some of these things are just beautiful and they could be continue making them. I don't think it's the, the cost of metal. Because the cost of metal will just get passed on to the figure to the people. And I can't most people would prefer doing Warhammer stuff if it was still in, pl in metal. So, you know. Because I've seen things where it's like, okay, this item costs $14 in metal, but we'll make it in plastic and it costs 12 Yeah, it's cheaper, but it's not that much cheaper. So... That's my unprofessional opinion. From what I see from my vantage point. And see, that's the reason why I think that it would be beneficial. It's, it'd be a pain in the ass for me, okay? And I'm opening myself up to a lot. But I would think it would be beneficial for me to do videos on airbrushing. Because I can just cut some of the crap out. Because... There's questions that I have. Like, I'll come up with a question. Like, okay, like, why do they, you know, that question you just asked, you know, what, you know, why are they, why is everything plastic now instead of white metal? And instead of getting some roundabout fucking answer, just cut the crap and then I'll give you the non-politics, you know, reason behind stuff. Like, you know, you, how do you start airbrushing? Well, I can tell you my experience and why I made the decisions where I did and what the repercussions were of them. And then maybe you can learn from that as well. Not some dancing around i'm sponsored by this company so you got to go with this even though it's not the best one i i, I don't like political um, kind of crap like that you know i mean i've got some of those same questions and i figured well if i went on this journey and learned some stuff from it i might as well show you guys what it is but those type of videos are kind of a problem because then you're going to get fanboys that'll be like ah, but you know i got all the comments moderated so if you come to my channel and start putting nasty stuff that wants to cause arguments, you know, you're not welcome here. That's just, that's not the environment for you, you know. I'm not trying to convert anybody, but it'd be like, man, I've been there. I've spent a lot of time like trying to figure out, okay, what compressor did I get? What this, which airbrush did I get? You know, it just, it's overwhelming and everybody's got a different opinion. And some people say, oh, buy the cheap one. And, you know, and you got to fight with the cheap one. It just, I think it would be beneficial maybe to some people just starting out at least to have something to, um, they can um, draw from, you know. All plastic models hold better than metal models. You mean like the piece has not fallen apart? Yeah. Yeah, the weld cement works a lot better than, you know, you have a, I mean, if you build something with weld cement and it's a plastic model, technically, when you're done, it's all one piece, right? You welded it all together. 
Um, they're just so much more expensive than they used to be. So much more expensive. And sometimes they're too flimsy. Like, I think the dragon stuff is precise, but man, you got to be really careful with that stuff. I haven't painted those, two tw those 222s yet. They're sitting there on my shelf. They'll get painted. Both of them will be in Panzer Gray. There we go. This is what we want to see here. I highlight some of the folds that this sculptor did a nice job trying to show you. You don't let them stand out, then all of his um, effort that he did is just kind of wasted, not appreciated. I go through phases with this stuff. Sometimes I want to build a model. Sometimes I don't want to build it. Sometimes I just want to paint it. Sometimes I want to paint figures. Sometimes I don't want to paint figures. You know, there's enough different stuff here that... The advantage that this has over, say, doing DBA is... Or something like DBA is that I have to pre-decide who's going to be on what stand together and they're stuck there. Here, because it's individual basing, like, I want to paint that person. So you paint them, and they're, and they're, they have a separate stand all by themselves. It's not like, well, now I got to pick guys to go with it. Well, I don't want to paint the next two guys that go with it. I want to paint something different. So there's that little bit of freedom here that isn't available in that other stuff. All right, I feel like I still need to bring this up a little bit more. Just not. noticeable enough there we go So this guy's Philippe. This other guy's going to be Guy. Because he could be the guy with a grenade. It's Guy! Hey, you can play serious, but you got to have fun. Okay, is it flesh time? No, let's paint his rifle first. See how that rifle color turned out. Yeah, that's good. We'll do that. They go and die again? Probably. I 
need to hide this thing. I'm not in a hurry to use war, army painter war paints. They just, the colors are fine. They just behave weird. They kind of behave the opposite of the way Coat the Arms paint behaves. Are we getting a Marcel of a Maurice? Perhaps with a mortar. Hmm. See, you get it. That's exactly, that's exactly the line of thinking that I appreciate. Well, we've got Paulette with the Panzerfaust. Um, Maurice with a mortar. I don't have a mortar guy. Um... How about Maurice with a Molotov? Uh, although the Molotov's a girl. And um, it's definitely a female character. And it will be a female character. There's no gender bending in this freaking army. This is before that nonsense. <laughs> uh, we're not bringing that nonsense onto the tabletop. Although she could be Marie. Not very attractive. Sorry, I'll do my best. Yeah. Um, I don't have a dude with a Molotov. Maurice is a legit good name. I'll probably have a Maurice. I can't guarantee that he has a Molotov. Would that mean this guy's Francois with a flag? Yeah, I like that line of thinking. It, it helps you kind of remember. What's another P name? A male P name that's that's French. That's well, I, I got it. I, I left this thing up. French names. I think I did nineteen nineteen or something like that. Nineteen nineteen. This thing's sideways. Let's see. It's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. Shit. I lost it. I try to leave, you know these things, you leave the window open and you don't need it. Uh, Marie. Yeah, Marie is like the most common French name. So that's definitely, that's probably who she's gonna be, although not very cute, Marie. Although any none of the females are particularly attractive, but maybe I just prefer a different look than these figures have. Let's put it that way. Um, See, Paul is a popular name. It's not French enough. Sorry. I may be up a creek with that one. Well, I'm not renaming Pierre. Pascal. Pascal would be okay. Pascal with a piot. With a piot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pascal with a piot. Yep. All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I know it's funny shit naming things. You know, so there's... Gaslands, you guys know about Gaslands, right? All the time when I was a member of the Facebook group, these people would, these really talented people would make this really talented vehicle. I'm like, help me name it. Like, you fucking dumbass. You name it before you build it. That's the fun, that's the funnest part of everything is, is naming it. Like, why would you build it and then name it? Like, you name it as, you, as you're building it. I don't know. Some people just aren't good at advertising and stuff like that. 
Go to names, troll through sports team rosters. Well, I could go up. There's this thing. It's called what is it? What's the name of this? Uh, what's the name of this program? Behindthename.com. I mean, it literally took me no time to find it. You could go by year and find the most popular boy and female names. So you don't go to 1940. You go to 1919 and see the people born in 1919, what their names were. And Marie is number one for like just about every year. Marie is like the most popular French name. Just like Jean is the most popular um, male name. Although, you know, the problem is, is it ends up looking like Jean. So... Okay, let's go back to where we were between, what are we doing with this big old, oh, we're doing the rifle, got it. Uh, here, I'm gonna find me a spot that's not violated by other colors. Well, I don't have a Lewis gun, but that's, that's the right kind of thinking. Lauren, yeah. You can just call me Lauren. Uh oh. Need another drippy of this stuff. Okay. We're going to assume this is a French rifle because it sure as hell looks like it. MAS something or another. Got his mouth over, he's got his hand over his mouth. Listen very carefully, I will only say this once. <laughs> Keep it down, the Bosch will hear you and come and take your children. Used to name Battletech pilots using obscure names from film credits. Still do, still do that from that game. That's a great idea. It get, gets you to read the, the watch the film credits. There are some really interesting names in film credits, aren't there? I mean, just really interesting names. Back when you used to get spam mail in the early 2000s at work, lots of spam mail. It would come from random senders and they would have two names that were just thrown together that wouldn't necessarily go together. And sometimes they were in the wrong order. Like sometimes you would have a surname as a first name and a first name as a last name. You know, like you would have, you know, McGillicuddy Andrew. And McGillicuddy is his first name, you know. Just really weird kind of stuff. So that would be, you know, interesting for a game is to take the whole, you know, list of these weird randomly named characters and somehow incorporate them in your game, you know? Of course, you could probably do, there's probably some combinations of, of weird things that go together, that, that get sent together that wouldn't go together, like, you know, Rabinowitz Hitler, you know, or stuff like that. I don't think, I don't think I got one from a Hitler or anybody. But, just really weird combinations. It's a guy that always, when he, he deceased recently, but he always put on really fun games. And they were like pulp games. The only gripe I had with him was that, well, I didn't have a gripe with him. He was an extremely nice fellow. One of those guys that makes you feel welcome no matter what, how long you've been playing the game. 
has a really had a really good attitude. But the only rule to his game is is you couldn't kill anybody. Like they would be supposedly killed, but then somehow they survived or whatever. But that was just to keep kind of his narrative together. So Jasvinder Bansil, for example, was a successor of Davion Metpowell as well as a video editor in a long forgotten film. Interesting. I guess it. Jeffrey, have you played the um, the computer game for the BattleTech, the excellent computer game for BattleTech? I think that's a great game. I really do. And it has great art in it. It has some awesome storyboard art in it that's just beautiful. Actually, my only problem with the whole BattleTech thing is that those weapons are just really inaccurate for the ranges of the firing at. Other than that, I kind of like, um, you know, I'm not a fan of the Warhammer stuff, but I am a fan of the Battletech stuff. I used to play it back, you know, many, many years ago with the miniatures and all that stuff. That game is fabulous. And one of the reasons is one of the guys that are working on it is part of the original team, so. I remember getting. I remember hearing good things about it. I got it. I started playing it, and I feel like I already knew how to play it before I even got it. So, it still it, it's it does a good tribute to its original thing, and I've played it quite a bit actually. My favorite mech is a stalker. Of course, I change up what it has on it, but. I like the stalkers. Okay, we have a bandolier. Ah, let's do the let's do the let's do the armband. The armband is like the that is really where it's at. Really enjoy doing the armband. All right, we've got the white here. When I was looking for something the other day, and I came across something, and I brought it up to you guys, what I was looking for was um, I had this bag of names, and I wanted to see if I had French Resistance fighter guys in there. I don't think I did. I never got to that point, but I do have a ton of German and Russian names, and British and American, I'm pretty sure as well. Just print it out just to cut them out and put them on the thing, and I've, I've got them somewhere. They'll, they'll turn up. Um, but I wanted to see blue is on that side. Got it. Okay. And I never did find it. But I also look super deep. But that was the intention when I was looking for it. Oh, yeah, it was that... Um, that scenario there, the Battle of, uh, what the hell was it called? Saint Remy? No. Uh, Saint Marcel. Yeah. Never got around to reading that. It's there.
Uh oh, we got a little lint tuft or something. There we go. It's the easiest line that is to put the first one. That's the best one yet. Da, you can't even see. Can't see with that kind of resolution. Let's, let's fix that. Okay, in front of the blue, in front of this thing right here. Still didn't turn out. The smearing? No. It's it's super clear. Come on. Why is it so blurry? Why are you so blurry? Yeah, why is that so blurry? Anyhow, it's like a telephone pole. Anyhow, oh, we're that close. Let's take a look at this. This sculptor did a really good job with these faces. Man, he's got some long ass figures. <laughs> yeah some of these faces are really really nice Come on, back out. There we go. All right, he's got a bandolier. About time to do his fleshy bits. All right, I'm gonna use a little boy's room. I'll be right back in a moment, I think. And we'll do the fleshy bits.
fleshy bits. Right. Now I should be able to clean these things and reuse them with hand sanitizer, but that's just, uh, that's being a bit cheap. <laughs> that's a little too thrifty. Just drop it right on top of it. There we go. Drop it like it's hot. This thing will go right back where it goes. That's the only thing that that's, we're going to use that for. By the way, I was mentioning yesterday that I had gotten a limited... Anyways, YouTube didn't like something I did on yesterday's video, yesterday morning. And I'm like, you could select, hey, do a human review. It, it, got, it got fixed. Like, you know, maybe it didn't like me using my key in the, in the subject line. I thought it was trying to create problems or something. Nope. Oh, this is fighting wars that are long gone. is not an ideology website. <laughs> Saying you love Malaysia brings some benefits. I have no problem. I only know one person from Malaysia. He, he's one hell of a guy. Actually, there's only one thing I wouldn't be able to stand about Malaysia, and that's they drive on the freaking wrong side of the road. That's it. Everything else is cool. Uh, Matchbox. Which which one, which one comes from Malaysia? Matchbox or uh, Hot Wheels? One of the two comes from Malaysia. That's cool. This one comes from China, though. This is a garbage can. 
Which one of these is Malaysia? Also China. Jeez, Louise. China. What the hell? Malaysia. Hot Wheels. So some, some Hot Wheels come from... I don't think this is useful. I may have to... Um, man, these wheels are really gnarly. I may have to repaint this and see if I can't make this some Nazi bastard that needs to be assassinated. That would be a good thing. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? The, um, the Wolfman is from Malaysia. I like listening to him. I haven't listened to him. I haven't listened to a lot of people's things. I'm just, I'm busy making stuff, you know, so. But I love listening. He's extremely, extremely calming voice. I like that. You don't have to do, you don't have to do calming drugs if you listen to calming voices. They could just, you could just chill out, you know. Earthquakes. I am not a fan of earthquakes. Mm -mm -mm. Nope, 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 nope. And I also wouldn't be a fan of tall buildings in places that have earthquakes. Definitely a no-no. And there are some tall-ass buildings in places that have earthquakes. You know. Malaysia. The good China. I had a guy who's a... He comes in seasonally. He has a little pop-up. What are they called? Food truck. It's really a food trailer because um, it's not self-propelled. Um, and he has this, I think it's gelato. It's called Lulu's. He has a cute little anime thing. He's seasonally. He's not here during the winter time. And I'm like, I got to ask this guy where he's from. You know, I was expecting when he, you know, I'm one, yes, I'm one of those people that sees someone that doesn't look like a, Anglo type person and I ask them where they're from. No, I don't think mean anything of it. I mean, you know, I mean, it doesn't bother me any, you know, everybody comes from a different place unless you're a, you know, Native American, you're from somewhere else. But anyhow, I'm like, this guy's got to be Japanese. There's something about him. It's like, I feel like it's Japanese. And I asked him, I said, is, um, I said, where are you from? And I was expecting him to say Chicago, you know, <laughs> and he goes, um, Taiwan and I without missing a beat I go oh the good China he didn't say anything like you know maybe somebody was listening to him like I was trying to bait him into something else I'm like no the good China yeah there's a lot of earthquakes there no thanks Taipei 101 right that's one of those big nasty tall skyscrapers used to be the biggest one Malaysia's got what, the Patronus Towers or whatever the hell they're called now? Those are one of the Bond movies. I've said it before. Why can't we make more stuff in Malaysia? I know they don't have enough people compared to some other places. Even though there's a big population. But... That's only happened a couple times that you're like, um, we're not sure about the content on this. I'm like, 
Have you really looked at it? I mean, you know, it's just it's just one of those auto things. That's that's the problem when you put crooked spider stuff on the internet. It's not necessarily somebody complaining about it. I mean, there could be somebody that complains about it, but you know, if you watch this show, we know what it's about. So um, it's just those automatic uh, computer generated monitoring type things that automatically happen. freaking say on there nothing nothing I don't normally say like maybe they did maybe it didn't like the fact that I said that um, it's okay to be anti-fascist as long as you're not communist <laughs> then you're just deceiving people and you you very well could be being deceived yourself that's why I won't do I, I don't mind doing Soviet vehicles I will not do Soviet vehicles that are liberation vehicles of Poland and Czechoslovakia you're just freaking lying to people like, oh, yeah, we're coming to help. Sure you are, asshole. I don't have a problem with the Soviet ones. You know, they're just defending themselves. And, you know, they came and... But the other people are like, oh, yeah, we're coming to help you. Okay, sure. Now you're just being deceptive. And I ain't falling for it. There's, um, I mentioned there was a couple guys that um, I've never really encountered anybody who was, um, that played German stuff just because, you know, they were, kind of had artillery motives. Although I did have one guy that, I don't know him anymore, I don't know what the hell happened to him. He enjoyed playing the Germans a little too much. I'm just going to leave it at that. And, um. But that reminded me of there's there's a there's two manufacturers and I'm not going to call them out on names. You can call them out if you want, but they make a lot of really questionable figures, and they make a lot of questionable figures of really kind of off the wall kind of stuff that makes me kind of like you know why are you making some. Why are you making figures for this? It's just a little too, like, way over the top. It's not like they're making figures for the Durlwanger Brigade, but it's close. Um, it's close. And I'm like, I'm not buying that stuff, you know? And um, one of them is actually one that I don't really care for their sculpting. But they make a lot of, like, you know, real proto-Nazi kind of stuff, you know? It's like... I actually don't mind if they made like, you know, figures for like, you know, Heydrich or Hitler or something like that. So you could like, you know, have a scenario where you got to shoot them or something like that. I mean, I, I think that's a legitimate scenario use, you know. But, you know, figures of, figures of troops that are known for doing, there's atrocities and then there's mass atrocities. I mean, there's a difference. There's a, there's a big difference between, you know, capturing some guy and like, we can't take prisoners, so oh, we got to shoot you. Or just go in with civilians and just freaking mow them down. I mean, it's just, there's a big difference between the two <clears throat> in my book. And, you know, atrocities happen. Everybody did them. Some people did more than others, obviously. If you don't know who that is, well, you need to go read your history. <laughs> but... 
Man, they make some weird stuff. Just like the big joke is, you know, that Osprey has so many books on German stuff. And it's like, you know, German, you know, underwear of the SS and stuff like that. They make some really obscure, like, extra, they make extra stuff for questionable German subjects that, that, that nobody else should. It just kind of puts in a question like, wait, what are you doing here, you know? You don't make anybody else's underwear. Why are you doing Third Reich underwear? Lingerie of the of the Schutzstaffel, you know, shit like that. Weird. Some of these stuff, some of the battlefield stuff is like that. Let's see if I can find some of the questionable things. I don't think that the author was a pro-Nazi guy at all, but you know, World War II refugees. That's freaking that's some useful stuff. And I'm gonna have to stop here soon because of the freaking light stuff coming through here. Three men walking carrying luggage. That's useful. Three women carrying luggage, one man kneeling, and two women kneeling. Men pushing bicycle laden with baggage. Two women walking, pushing. Oh, here's your British word coming up. Pram. One woman pushing pram with small child. Catholic priest and two nuns walking. Two men and one woman running. Three children carrying baggage. Never got any of those. That stuff would be really useful for this kind of scenario. Let's see. Let's see if they're in here. And not everything. I mean, you got you know, they got some good guy stuff that is obscure, like um, Polu, nineteen forty. 1940 French infantry wearing equipment. Oh, this isn't what guys think. I'm thinking of there's some, he makes some Belgians or something like that. I mean, that's kind of unique. SS Grenadiers, Rauschenjägers, Hitler Youth and Volkssturm. One of the figures I want to, I want one of the companies, I think, I want to say it's Caesar. They make some Volkssturm guys that look really, really interesting. Like they got a lot of personality. It says Panzer Corps. Belgian Fortress Troops. That's what I was thinking of. Nah, it's not in... Oh, here it is. Hanshar Strike. Range of figures enables you to create the struggle for Muslim independence in World War II... Bosnia against communist partisans and that. Okay, that's not too bad. It was something else. It was just like werewolves or something like that. It was like a little. It was a little too obscure. But the other company is that that company's not in business anymore. Battlefield. The other company's still in business. They do really weird. Like, why are you making this really bad folks figures? Of all the people I've ever played, only one was, took it a little too far. Good old perambulator is seen through an omnibus window. What? Perambulator. I, I don't I don't I don't understand that form of English. <laughs> I'm American. Is that what a pram is that what pram is short for? Perambulator? Why don't you just call it a buggy?
of Panama is seen through a bus window. Omnibus. No, what's the word I like? Lori. It's a lorry. Lori sounds like a name for a parrot. It's Lori. She ate all the crackers. Ah. A lorry. I have it in here. Hold on, let me go get it. It's in my boot. Really? In your boot? No, no, the other boot. Oh, okay. You guys use trousers, you don't use pants. So when you use pants, what are pants? I don't, something is pants. Ah, that's pants. <laughs> oh, two nations divided by a common language. Yeah, and a pond. UK, a buggy, and a pram are different. Got, do I have a holy aura yet up there in the top thing? <laughs> <laughs> Should come up with words of wisdom at just shy of 9 a.m. I really don't want to sign off unless I have to. You'd like to get Philippe done here? Buggy or push chair has four wheels and the child sits like in a seat. In a pram, the child lies flat. Okay. Yeah, I can visualize that. So you can't have an old kid in a pram unless the pram is very big. Like in a cot. Some prams convert into a carry cot. Okay. Excellent. Now I'll know next time I have a child in Britain. <laughs> Which will hopefully be never. I don't need to have any more children. I'm good. sunburn on my ear.
whispering something across the street. Do not eat the eclair. Okay, I'm going to use this same color I've been using for all the straps and stuff because I really, really like it. And it's a nice color and it's coat de arms and I'm a big fan of coat de arms, except these lids, but the paint inside is stellar. take this opportunity to go ahead and remove this booger, paint booger here. Of course, where the hell am I going to put it? How about there? It'll dry out before I run something into it. paints probably over 20 years and I thought it had a smell I thought I had a pleasant smell a very mild but pleasant smell I could have been wrong Probably my favorite paints out there. Okay, let's go to the smaller brush. Here we go.
paint there somehow. Oh, and it dried, so we're all good. Okay, it looks okay if I see it here. It's got to get up over the shadows. All right, that looks okay. We got a wristwatch to do, some hair. We're going to go ahead and use the strap. You use the same color for the strap on the rifle. You know, I'd be fine painting in this natural light if it was applied evenly. Problem is, is the shadows of it is wor are worthless. We have a frozen screen. <sighs> that, that, that'll fix it. Yep. Like to get this guy done that would be that would be ideal um, this guy's gonna be blondish I mean he already has a Hitler youth looking shirt I might as well make him blonde right what can't
I see I'm blocking my own light with the shadow. Mr. Barnes, welcome. Welcome to the land of shadows. They are brutal right now. Freezing screen and laggy. Yeah, I didn't do anything different. I'm not sure. Well, there actually are like 10 notifications down here. I don't know why it's using that much of the CPU. There's really nothing else going on. Yeah. I'm blaming it on the Chinese. All right, we have a wristwatch to do, some shoes, and the metal parts on the gun, and he's done. Great view of the sun, though, beats the diz drizzling day we're having here. Man, we could use some some rain. We haven't gotten rain in like two months. But yeah, that's yeah. This this room actually gets some pretty decent natural light. It's just not very good for doing what I'm doing right now. It only lasts about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, something like that. like natural light though a lot even if the side of my head's getting baked unevenly we could definitely use a drizzling day up some of his shirt. Let's do that.
We're gonna keep him with the black shoes. <laughs> 